Hey guys, Joss here. Just want to thank you all for investing your time in this workshop. It really does mean a lot to us. So what we've actually done is we've spoken to the guys at Sellhack. They've been running outbound email marketing campaigns for years now. And what we've asked them to come up with is some of the best practices, the how-tos, basic overview of how you can get started with outbound email marketing today. And on that note, I'm just going to hand you straight over to Roddy. He's getting to the content and I'm sure we'll all speak very soon. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. So I am Roddy from Cellhack, and uh, yeah, let's just get the elephant out of the room from the beginning. This is not going to be a webinar where I promote Cellhack services. We're a tool you can use if you're interested, I'll mention it again. Follow up with me, I'm, I'm happy to help anybody in this group. But Joseph and I got together because we feel that there are a lot of small businesses and startups particularly who can be leveraging this form of technique rather than any particular tool. And they're not. And one of the reasons for that, even when you start to look into some of the more basic systems out there, it can become totally overwhelming. And nobody's just breaking down the basics of how do you do this? How do you get set up to see if it's even going to work for you and go forward? So given that I am not a huge name in the internet marketing space, and that's because I prefer the inbox. Um, no, I'm, I'm kidding. But I did want to give you a bit of a background on me. So I actually got my position with Cellhack through a cold email. Ryan O'Donnell and I got in touch, uh, asked for an example. I shot him a cold email that became a cold call from him offering a position. We got talking pretty quick and I hopped on board. From there, um, things have never slowed down. I eat my own dog food. I use cold email outreach each and every day to get in touch with the people that I'm trying to sell my services to. And this continues to work well for me. This is why we double down on cold email outreach and really don't have to focus on much else. I'm not saying not to do that, not to use that in combination with a number of methods, but this can be tremendously effective. Now, yes, I did mention that I continue to get job offers based on outreach alone. I didn't do that to be arrogant. I'm nothing special, but to showcase that you know even even when people aren't necessarily interested in our product they're seeing how effective this type of outreach can be and they want somebody to do it for them so for any of you independent contractors out there maybe a few copywriters that joined on you know you guys can use this too and hey maybe somebody approaches you with an offer that's pretty appealing I like what I'm doing so you know this tended to happen more in a sales development role than a head of growth but you know it was worth mentioning then I meet awesome people through cold emails you would be very surprised what you know a LinkedIn profile will tell you or just a short discussion with somebody and guys you know this just as well as I do sometimes it's not the direct fit but the indirect fit that's even more beneficial you meet someone who knows someone who knows someone you know how this goes it's classic and genuine networking and yes through a cold email so emails are like pizza surprisingly good cold and at very least effective I'm sorry I think I'm clever I thought that up like the first week on the job and I think it holds true maybe it's not surprising to you that cold emails are effective but for a lot of people it is um, the way I think about cold email campaigns in the overall scheme of sales and marketing so you've got your Facebook PPC you know paid advertising what have you that's kind of like going and hanging around the same coffee shop that your crush hangs out at hoping that he or she might come up to you and introduce themselves and say hey like you, you seem pretty cool what are you all about whereas cold email is like going into that coffee shop seeing that they're over there going up introducing yourself and asking them if they want to go out with you now yeah that's that can be a bit intimidating not so much through an inbox but still the fear of rejection is there and it happens, but 
it's rarely more than a no, not right now, or actually, hey, I know someone. And those of you who are more experienced in sales will know that a no is actually the second best answer. Yes is always welcome, but no, at least they're not kicking around in your sales funnel, making you wonder or anything like that. And there's a lot that you can do with a no. That helps you validate your product or service, further identify your target prospects, those ideal client avatars. You can go all sorts of ways with no, but you know, in terms of email, if they tell you stop emailing me, stop, we'll get into that. But otherwise, we're going to focus a lot more on what happens to get the yes. So who should use outbound sales efforts, AKA cold email campaigns? Pretty much any business that could use more customers. And that's not me being sarcastic. There are businesses out there who really can't take on any more customers. In such cases, it would be silly to reach out to offer services that you can't. But for most of us, we are looking to fill the pipeline. So anyone trying to begin conversations, gain exposure, or you know, get directly to a sale can leverage these techniques. In recent years, small businesses and startups particularly are getting the benefit from efforts like this. It's the minimal effective dose for the maximum return. These smaller businesses, startups, do not have huge sales teams to go about doing this each and every day, so they really need to make the most of each and every effort. Let me reiterate the point one more time. This is not spam. I know that most people on the webinar today are probably already familiar to a degree with outbound efforts, but oftentimes you hear cold email and you automatically think generic Viagra from India somewhere. No, that's not what we're doing. This is targeted outreach to prospects that are likely interested in your services. So it's actually quite the pleasant surprise to have somebody wind up in your inbox offering you something that you've been looking for. Now with that said, even that targeted outreach cannot be a spam-esque type message. So you want to follow the can spam Act guidelines to make sure you're compliant with those, otherwise you could get in some trouble. But honestly, these are pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and we have some additional information in this guide that Jose and I are going to provide everybody that's on the webinar today. So where to find prospects? everywhere um my personal preference is linkedin facebook twitter well actually i go to all of these you likely know your ideal customer you probably already have quite a few so what you should do is take a look at that person find their interests find their field find their industry find you know how long they've been at their job you can get very specific or you can back out a bit but try and find people that are similar to them I tend to prefer using LinkedIn for the ease of narrowing down those criteria. I can go to their job title, I can go to their industry with advanced features on LinkedIn, you can even see how long they've been there. But the point is, there's, there's no place that you shouldn't be looking. But getting the information from there is the next part. So you can go to any number of these places. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce might actually have direct contact information. I'm not sure if they call that the Chamber of Commerce in all countries, but uh, usually a list of local businesses that will have the owner at least with contact info provided. My, again, preference is going to LinkedIn. I have some tools and I will show you those that will allow you to find the contact information very quickly. Um, Facebook, you know, you've got information there, but the, the point is to get in touch with the actual person you want to be in touch with. You don't want to spend too much time dialing HR, looking for a directory. You just want their actual contact information. Freemium tools for prospecting and my handsome mug. Now, guys, I'm not pushing Cell Hack today. Uh, I'm happy to talk about Cell Hack with anyone, what our tool does, but we do have a free version available. And it's a browser extension. You can go into LinkedIn or a company's website 
and when you find somebody that you want to be in touch with you'll hit our extension and quickly gather their contact information. Reportive is a tool that you can use in your inbox to get kind of an overview of who you're talking to. It will bring you to their LinkedIn profile if they have that address on file. Mixmax is, there are a number of these. It allows you to track the email opens. Additionally, I think Mixmax allows you to undo sends and um, that can be a godsend when you realize five seconds after you sent something out that it was to the wrong person. Now here is my super duper important warning. Our whole aim here is to save you time, not waste it. So don't get every browser extension, every email add-on. That's only, that's only going to eat up your time. Something new is coming out every day. Get something that's been around for a while, that's been proven, people are having success with, read a few reviews, and just let that be your product stack. Okay, so now here's where we get into some more details. And yes, this is a very plain slide, as they all have been. But, outreach. You have your prospects, and you're ready to go. You're ready to get started with this. One email is never, ever, I take that back, rarely, ever going to be enough. I have had responses from one email. I'm sure you have as well. But follow-up is essential, especially if you're in the business-to-business -business space. I know that with my personal emails, friends will get in touch with me, send me a message, and I will put it on the back burner. I'll forget a week will go by, two weeks will go by. Even a follow-up, I'll forget. I feel horrible about it. It doesn't stop me from doing it. So that's why the automated outreach is so important. Usually three or four emails down the line is when you're going to get the most responses. You're not annoying somebody. You're doing them a service by staying top of mind. Remember, you're prospecting people that are likely to be interested in your product or service. So if you can stay relevant, if you can give them reminders, you're helping them. Okay, so what does just a general outreach campaign look like? automated outreach campaign of course and these are going to vary it doesn't have to be six emails I would I would stick to six to eight um, but for the sake of demonstration here and really if anybody's just starting out I would stick to six tops and keep it two weeks max any longer you're just really dragging things out so like to do an introduction outreach value proposition this is where you're telling them what you have to offer if you hear back that's fantastic but I'm doubting it so two to three days later you'll send out another one hey remember me they'll probably say oh yeah that guy and maybe they'll get back to you then but chances are they might not so that's when the email three intro value prop one more time at this point they might be thinking oh okay yeah this guy I, I keep saying that I want to get in touch with him I'm going to respond if they don't, that's where I usually like to throw out a, hey, did you miss this? Give them a bit more time in case things have been incredibly hectic, but it reminds them of who you are, reminds them that you're still interested, and a lot of people respect the persistence. After that, it's, uh, it's typical that you're having a bit more trouble getting in touch with them. You may start to feel like this isn't such an ideal prospect and you would want to send out a reminder a bit later. Uh, maybe it is the case that they've just been incredibly swamped. So having trouble to reach you, I've been attempting, short reminder of the value proposition. After that point, um, and again, these can vary in how many emails, but here I'm doing it in six. This is where you might want to try something like a breakup email and we can get more into the particulars at some other point feel free to shoot a message at the end here or send a follow-up email but many people have written about these there's several ways to go about it and it's actually kind of like reverse psychology you've been pretty persistent with this people showing interest showing interest showing interest and then all of a sudden you write them something like hey it seems like you're not interested right now, so I am going to postpone any further outreach. If in, uh, in the next few weeks here you have an interest, feel free to get in touch. And this is uh, 
I've I've been surprised myself. This is kind of like when you have that um, that girl or that guy that's interested in you, and you're just kind of brushing them off all the time, and then all of a sudden they're uh, they're not. They don't want to hang out. And you're like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You you you're not interested in me. So I have had so many people after a breakup email, so to speak, say, hey, well. Well, maybe we could uh, set up a demonstration next week. Would that be okay? All right. So, so I always like to throw those out at the end. And again, um, what's very important about these is they're not angry. You're not disappointed. You're not. They don't owe you anything. Just let them know that you are going to spend your time elsewhere where you're getting more of a return. Now, of course, none of that matters. None of it if you are not writing good emails to begin with. So that's what we're going to go into next. Okay, so good emails. I touched on this briefly already, but a good email is not a lengthy one. Even if you have the most custom, fantastic written memoir, white paper about how exactly your service will serve them, nobody has time for that. You don't have time for that. Like we were speaking about when that friend writes you for the first time in forever and you're like, oh, this is a lot. I'm going to get back to that later. You, that's the opposite of what you want. You want them to be able to read it quickly, get to the point, know what you have to offer, and then get in touch if there's a fit. So again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this now. These are some basic guidelines. And the reason for that is I don't want to drag this out. My whole thing is being efficient with time. You're free to follow up with me. In fact, not free. I, I would love for you to follow up with me. But before you do that, Jose and I are going to give you the cell hack guide that we have on writing. It's called Beat the Inbox. And it's how to get in the inbox, how to write effective emails and campaigns to get responses. So this is a little snippet from there. There's a lot more, but again, we keep it pretty short and concise ourselves. It's the information that's going to get you going. And after that, any questions, any campaigns you want me to look at quickly for you, I'll be happy to do so. Tools for email campaigns. There are countless. Uh, HubSpot, that's a pretty advanced CRM, but they also have a free version if any of you guys are using that. Things that are email service providers like Yesware, uh, MailChimp, a lot of people know MailChimp and, and I don't really recommend that. I'm going to touch on that in a second. Just pick one, um, check it out. Some of you need more advanced functionality, some of you need much more basic. I just want to try this and see if it works. Things to consider are the analytics that they provide. You want to know if you can track open rates, um, which emails are getting responses, and also send limits. Depending how they integrate with which account you're using, you will be set to a certain amount of sends. That's not going to be a problem for the majority of you, but it is something to keep in mind. So I, I mentioned MailChimp, and I don't, I don't have anything against MailChimp. It's just I, basically, I tend to see MailChimp is more for kind of that newsletter inbound functionality. And when you're doing cold email outreach, you just want plain text. You want it for a number of reasons. Uh, you, first, it's got a better chance of getting into the inbox. And second, it's much more personal. If somebody sees something that looks like a canned newsletter coming out to them for something they didn't sign up for, not interested. If it looks like it came from your personal email, which it does, you know, mine say Roddy at Cellhack. Hey, I'm Roddy at Cellhack. I want to talk to you about Cellhack. Just basic to the point. So MailChimp has a functionality where you can just have basic text, but still nine no, not nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, as much as you can, you want it to look like it came directly from your email. And of course, I saved the fear of blacklists for the end just to scare you guys off from even trying this at all. No, it's blacklists are important to talk about, but they're rarely an issue if you are following the guidelines that we've presented and the material we'll be presenting you. 
you don't want to blast your outreach again this isn't spam so don't act like it's spam if you have a targeted list and you follow the guidelines for writing effective campaigns chances are you will never wind up on one of these now it is important to start slow when you know Google recognizes that hey all of a sudden this guy is sending out a hundred emails a day and 200 emails a day and 200 emails that day too much too soon kind of registers as a red flag additionally the content that you have you know people might flag you for spam there so make sure it's targeted outreach but otherwise rarely an issue so from time to time you still want to check the integrity of your account and you can do that with these tools I've listed here these are great they'll save you such a headache and I mean you design your campaign, you check it once, you put them through one of these tools, get a spam score. How likely is this going to register? In the rare case that you do suspect you're on a blacklist somewhere, you can check that with the MX Toolbox Diagnostic. There's just, uh, there's just a ton you can do, but probably don't need to. I will have an additional article that I can send out to the group here just in case you get on one of these. I've, um, well, actually a few weeks ago, we did a in-house test. I got myself on and off a few pretty easily. Um, actually, on was probably harder to get. But yeah, it's not going to be an issue, but it is something that you need to be aware of. Don't don't just start sending out to 300 people, 400, 500. Don't test those limits. There's another reason for that. Okay, so we've covered blacklists if they even become an issue. Let's get back to how to actually start doing this. And yes, you've already read the warning, of course. It's start slow. I always recommend starting slow, and there are a few reasons why, but mostly just you don't want to bite off more than you can chew. You all will have varying sales cycle lengths. You know, if you are a small media company, your sales cycle is going to take a bit longer than somebody who's just offering some basic software such as myself. Even as such, most of the time I get on a demonstration. If it's not a major account, I can just have a deal there or whatever I'm going to do. I've made the mistake of reaching out to too many people. I'm just one guy. There's you know it's it's an okay situation to be in but it's really not ideal you you have a bunch of people who are interested and you can't follow up with them effectively what ends up happening is you're still losing the sale it's you know sloppy follow-up or it's just too much to handle so i always recommend test this out maybe 25 to 50 prospects one to two times a week then ramp up depending on interest. And remember, these are campaigns. So when you first start out, yeah, it's just 25 people. And then you've reached out to 50 people. And then you're still going that next week when you've now reached out to 75 and they build. So don't do too much too soon. There's another reason for that. As we mentioned the send limits earlier, you don't want to get caught up in a situation where you're going from zero to 500 emails in one or two days but really it's about that effective follow-up so in order to do that you'll actually have to get started and yes it will take a little bit to get the tools in place get the system there get your uh, email campaign actually created and again with those I'm happy to take a look for anyone in this group just a high level okay you can you've got the best practices but maybe you can improve this that whatever just just reach out get in touch but get started you see that make use of mistakes you will make mistakes I make mistakes all the time you you'll have errors I mean spell check but it happens one of my more successful campaigns I actually got a name wrong and it people people love to point out your mistakes so there were tons of responses just like did you know you did this did you know you did and yes yeah I, I see it and um, you know, I responded with, would you believe me if I said it was some sort of marketing ploy? Of course, they didn't. And I wouldn't recommend um, doing any sort of, 
any form of technique or something like that, trying to generate interest for the wrong reasons. But when it happens, make use of it. Laugh. It's not It's not a lost sale. It's certainly not a lost sale. It's not a lost cause. If anything, it shows that you're human. And when people suspect automated outreach, which is fine with them, but they do like to know that somebody's on the other end. Okay, guys, so that's really what I have for you. Again, this was just kind of a high-level overview of how to go about cold email outreach, best practices, a few tools, just what you need to get started. If you have questions, please, 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 don't hesitate to contact me, rodiatcellhack.com. There's my LinkedIn profile if you want to connect or check out my background there. There's my calendar page. You can schedule time to speak with me. Now, that's going to take you to, like, demonstrations. We don't have to go into a demo. We can just talk. Give me a note in there. We'll set it up. And then there's Twitter. I don't really use Twitter. I should maybe use more Twitter. Whatever. What, what I'm doing is working. So, again, happy to field some questions now. But things are likely to come to you in this process. And at those points, I know Jose will be happy to direct you as well. And then you've got my info. All right. Thanks, guys.